Joining us now is Eric Nelson, and he is both a Emmy winner and a Tony winner. So hello, Eric, how are you? I'm good, Donna, it's good to be here. So, so the funny thing is, is that I was joking with you before our interview, and I said, well, now you're two away from like, you're going toward an EGOT, right? So an <laughs> EGOT for our audience means that you can win something special in every single category. So when you were little, is this something you've always wanted to do when you were younger? Have you always wanted to be in this business? Um, well, first of all, the thought of an EGOT is just mind blowing to me because I guess technically I would be halfway there, but never in a million years would I have expected to be here. Um, you know, when I was really young, no, I, um, you know, was, was just into sports and, and kind of lived an average normal life in South Florida. and. Uh, as I got a little bit older, I, I actually started, um, there was a, a dance studio by where we lived in Florida and they offered acting classes. Uh, so I started taking them there, um, as well as dance classes and, uh, just fell in love with the arts completely. And so by the time I was 13, had the chance to move to New York city and started working as an actor at 13 and just kind of never looked back. It was just one of those random things that spiraled into a, a lifelong profession and, you know, really the, the love of my life. Well, that's such a lucky number for you considering the fact that you were 13 and let's talk about 13. Tell us about that production. So that was, pretty incredible and now it's getting this whole second life as a as a movie on netflix which is just uh, was so unexpected and it's been you know so many years now since we did the show but um 13 was a, a broadway musical that uh i got to do in manhattan on broadway uh and it was it was really special because it was the first all teenage cast uh, ever to be on Broadway, and not only was our was our cast uh, all teenagers, but our band was too, and so they really scoured the world looking for the most talented musicians for the pit, and um, and actors and singers to be in the show, and um, it, it it started the careers of Ariana Grande and Elizabeth Gillies and so many incredibly talented performers who are now household names. So uh, to see it kind of coming back now as a Netflix movie, which I think just released a couple days ago and I haven't seen it yet, I gotta get on that. Um, it's just, it's been really, really fun to see uh, a show and character that you created get a whole nother life on screen um, after you know we, we got to live it on stage for, for so many months. and basically a year between the pre-Broadway run and then on Broadway. So it was a blast. Um, and as a young teenager performing on Broadway, it was a pretty surreal experience that I now wish I could do as, you know, a 30 year old adult. Um, and I think I'd appreciate it in a whole different light. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I graduated high school in 1983, but a hundred years before that, it was 1883. And I'd love to know your thoughts on that because it seems to be like everyone in the whole world is just celebrating it. What are your thoughts on participating in that? Oh my, well, first of all, the transition into 13 to now 1883, how you did that was very nicely done. Um, <laughs> just hat off to that. Um, it, it, you know, it's still, I feel like we're still living in it right now because it just came out this year and we're still doing all sorts of fun press for it and, you know, traveling all over the country for events and um, autograph signings and, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. So it's been, it's been uh, a journey to say the least, no pun intended. And it's been an incredible ride. And I'm just, you know, still again, pinching myself uh, to be on, on this journey with, with, with all these legendary actors and, and, um, you know, Taylor Sheridan, who created the show, is just such a genius. And to kind of get in his circle and, you know, be a part of his group uh, was a dream come true for me. Um, and I hope to uh, work with him for many years to come. And uh, from beginning to end was was just almost, you know, unimaginable as far as uh, we had to put in a ton of work, right? Because we had to uh, portray these cowboys who had obviously been riding horses their whole lives and working with cattle and all of these things that I had not done my whole life. Um, I, I had been familiar with horses and in that world a little bit, but, you know, the level that, that we had to take it to on the show was just, you know, a whole nother atmosphere. So to get to, to get to surround myself in that culture and history and, 
and, and to get to, you know, play uh, such a, a fun role uh, in a rather, you know, in a more kind of dark, intense show was uh, was a blast. Getting to kind of bring the, the, the light to it a little bit, as, as my character Ennis did, was um, just just so much fun. I wish it didn't have to come to an end already, uh, but very grateful for the time we had. <laughs> When you were preparing for that role, what were some of the things that you did? Um, because a lot of people don't know this, but Florida does have a lot of horses and Florida does have a lot of cattle, right? So what did you prepare? Did you do any preparing down there in Florida before you worked on the project? Not in Florida, uh, but we did grow up. Uh, my my mom had a, a horse farm uh, near our house in South Florida. And so we had horses growing up and my dad was actually a thoroughbred polo horse trainer a lot of his life. And my grandfather trained reining horses. And so that world was in me and I had, you know, it, it experienced it and, 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 and known what that's like. Um, but as a kid, it was weird i think because my parents were so into horses it made us kids kind of go a different direction and i was like no that's their thing i, I don't want to get into horses because you know that's what mom and dad do so i'm gonna i'm gonna play hockey and football and you know anything else uh and then finally i got the show and all these years later we actually for training uh taylor sheridan put us through a cowboy camp and so i actually got three weeks of, of training, uh, horse riding training, you know, working with cattle, shooting the guns, um, roping, you name it, everything cowboy we had to do for uh, two official weeks, but I got an extra week at the top uh, because I was already in Texas. And so he just said, come on up. Um, and so that was the main training. But the funny part is, you know, I started, um, as soon as we started cowboy camp, I completely fell in love with my horse, but also just the, the activity as a whole every day showing up and riding all day long and you know, everything my parents probably wish we would have done as kids and so i remember i think i called my dad uh or my mom and uh after like day two and i was like i'm so sorry you were right horses are amazing i love them i, I want i want to <laughs> you know be riding for the rest of my life and i don't know what i was thinking as a kid um but it all you know came full circle and uh really cool that i was able to kind of step into it in my own way um, not really being influenced by, you know, my family. And so then I think that, you know, that kind of sealed the deal for me. And now I'm sold. I don't ever not want to be on a horse. <laughs> I love that. It's almost like your, your dad probably said, it's about time, kid, right? Um, but <laughs> exactly. that, that's nice. It, you know, and sometimes I believe even with art, I think that sometimes some of it's genetic, right? And it's whether or not we turn that light switch on or we turn the light switch off when it comes to talents. What are some of the ways that you're looking forward to participating um, as an actor or as a producer uh, on the horizon for you? What, what's right there for you right now, Eric, that you're looking forward to? Um, you know, I, I'm just putting the, uh, the pedal to the metal right now and taking advantage of the heat that we've got going on from the show. And I signed with a great new agency that they've been amazing, APA. And uh, so we're just, we're kind of attacking at all angles right now. Cause I, I like staying busy. I like, you know, kind of taking advantage of the moment and, and just going for it. And I don't really, you know, want to sit back and, and take a break and relax at this moment. Um, Cause you know, when it's hot, it's hot. And some, when it's cold, it's cold. So you gotta, you gotta go all in. Uh, <laughs> so I am, I've got, I've got a film coming up. Um, I'm about to go do in uh, Louisville, Kentucky that I can't touch on yet because they haven't made the announcement, um, but I'm very, very excited for it. And I can tease that um, I'm learning uh, and learning to play guitar for the film. Uh, I get to play a musician and uh, I get to perform a number of songs in the movie, singing and playing. So really excited about that. Again, getting thrown into a, a boot camp to learn something that uh, I wasn't that skilled in prior to uh, filming. And so, you know, just another perk of this job is you get to throw yourself into these different lives and these different characters and fully immerse yourself. And along the way, you get to learn really cool, unique um, skills that otherwise you probably wouldn't have, have dove into so heavily. So really looking forward to this film. And um, for all the Western fans out there, I do have another Western coming up that I'll be shooting in the spring um, with uh, James Landry Bear, who played Wade in 1883. We were kind of cowboy counterparts on the show and uh, we'll be playing cousins in this, uh, in this upcoming Western. So really excited about that as well. 
I'm excited for you. That sounds like a lot of fun. You know, you could keep your cowboy boots then, I guess, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, I have so many pairs now, I might as well. <laughs> you might as well get advantage out of them. They're already broke in, right? Um, and then who yeah. do you, you know, what music do you like to listen to, Eric? You don't have to tell us about this new project, but is there a certain band, like, you know, now that concerts are back out, do you, have you been able to go listen out to live, live music at all? I have, you know, it was a bucket list for me to uh, see Paul McCartney. And I was actually just fortunate enough to see him at Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. And I I don't know what happened from the start to the finish of that concert because I think I just like lost my mind and was totally in the moment and in the zone and didn't even blink for a second. Um, but it was an incredible experience and big Beatles fan. So to get to see him was just truly a dream come true. Um, and on the flip side, you know, I'm, I'm really into uh, my country roots right now and I'm, I'm gonna be seeing George Strait uh, here in the next, I think in November, which again, I'll be really looking forward to. So to see these iconic, legendary, older performers that have just, you know, paved the way for so many other artists after them is uh, for me, the most exciting thing to see. And those are the, those are the artists and performers I, I really try to tackle to, uh, well, I really try to, um, uh, you know, try to see as much as I can. Uh, and now that things are open, I'm oh, taking advantage of that for sure. Me too. I think it's something that none of us will ever take for granted, whether we're on the performing side or whether we are in the audience. Uh, there's just something so special about a performer and that live audience that you just, you just can't replicate that. So I thank you so much for joining us here, Eric. I look forward to watching you in all of your upcoming things and sincere congratulations because you have put in the time and the effort in your career and in your craft where now the roles are actually coming to you and you're able to like celebrate what you can do best. So congrats on that. I'm really, truly happy for you. Donna, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And it was so such a pleasure to be here with you. And I love your show and you. And so okay. hopefully we can do this again really soon. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. All right. Take care. Happy journeys to you, Eric. Be well. Thank you. Bye -bye. You too. Bye-bye.